come in hot. All right. Da. <laughs> Hello. Do you have a theme and music. I do. I don't have a theme. I don't have a theme. I don't I think, have a theme yet. I think this is a good theme. This is a good theme. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, hello everyone and welcome. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Multi Hyphenates with Emmanuel. My guest today is someone that I enjoy speaking with. Every time I have a conversation with Nadia, aka, I am just like, when are we going to the moon? Because clearly she's already on her way there, so I need a ticket to join this babe on the moon. Um, and so, welcome, Nadia. Thank, Thank you for you. joining us Thank you. on Thank the multi hyphenates with Emmanuel. I really Thank enjoy you. saying that name. I, I enjoy <laughs> hearing it. Right? I'm actually really excited. And before we even get started, I do want to congratulate you oh. for, you know, occupying this space that Thank you're you. in. I think it's very necessary. And we just talked about that. I think it's so necessary for people to see this side. And thank you for doing that. Thank you, and thank you for coming on. Um, so we're filming today in Nadia's neck of the woods. Um, in the, well, not even to give them press, but we are in a lovely <laughs> sunny state. <laughs> it's a beautiful time. So Nadia, honestly, Nadia is so many things. So as as is part of the course on this show, we're always speaking to multi hyphenates, people who are living multiple lives and making the most of their one life, doing lots of different things that intersect that don't intersect, that are just different parts of themselves. And Nadia, you are the consummate multi-hyphenate. And I could rattle off your doings like I know them, but I think it's best, I always like to let my guests. Mm -hmm. So who is Nadia Ike? Introduce yourself to the people. So I'm Nadia Ike. I am born and raised in Ghana, half Nigerian. I only cook Ghana jollof. We always talk about that. <laughs> I'm not even doing this today. We're not, do we're not doing but this today. But I mean, I think I've always considered myself multifaceted and multidimensional. I think that, you know, growing up in Ghana and being in that sort of environment, you know, people aren't comfortable mm -hmm. with you being multifaceted. Yep. Right? And everyone wants you to be one dimensional, be one type of person. And so I consider myself, well, I don't consider myself, I am an entrepreneur, I'm a community builder, I'm an Olympic athlete, and I am just all around someone that pursues life with passion and, and dauntlessly pursue the things that I love. Yeah. Whatever that is today. <laughs> you know? Whatever that is today. And she, I, know, I mean, she just kind of said it so easily, so I'm going to reiterate Nadia's <laughs> current, I don't, like her portfolio of doings. Yes. Nadia is Ivy League educated with a degree in psychology and she is a business, she's an entrepreneur. She's not just a business woman, she's a business woman. <laughs> um, she is like the queen of building transformative relationships. Nadia is the queen of energy, positive, good vibes and she spots it, she understands it and it's not something trivial or woo woo, it's taking those vibes and taking that energy and building partnerships that become something substantial um, and she is in fact an Olympic athlete and we're taping this in an Olympic year so in a couple of months actually yeah. Nadia is on her way to represent Ghana in the Olympics um, and first of all let's take that in Let's just take a minute to acknowledge. You're actually going. You're going to the Olympics. Yes, I am. You and are going to the Olympics. It's, it's one of those things, though, that like I feel like I have to be there for it to hit me. Yeah. You know, I think for me, I've been working on this and pursuing this for years, and I just have to be there. You have to be there. I just have to be there. I'm glad that you need to be there for it to hit you. <laughs> it has hit me. I have already been hit by it, and um, actually. If anybody asks, oh, what did you do today? Oh, I just spoke to my friend. She's like an Olympic athlete. She's going to the Olympics. Um, I'm just going to volunteer that information. So, 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 and I mean, I, I'm, I'm not usually stumped for words, but I think it's just, it's incredible. You're actually going to the Olympics and you are balancing this with all the other things that you do. And I think you're playing it, I think you're downplaying. Let's talk about how much work is required. We were just talking about that for a bit. <laughs> How much work is required to be all these things that you are? And I think for you, you're a perfect candidate to talk about this because, you know, there's work and then there's like actual physical taxing labor that you have to do as an athlete. So let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, I think the work goes without saying, right? 
to be in the Olympics for the event that I do, you have to be at least top 35 in the world. Wow. To be top 35 in the world for anything is going to require hours and hours of work. So, I mean, what does that look like? I train about four hours a day. My training wow. load is about four hours a day. Um, and then after that, I am the director of community for Summit Series, so I do that through the day. And after that, I have a consulting gig that I do with the University of Miami. I do that as well. And then I work on stuff for Accelerate. So it's, it's, it's just, a, it's a lot of work. And I think that the thing that Instagram prevents people from seeing is how much work yes. goes into success, right? Everyone thinks that it's just this instant thing that just happens. People look at me and they're like, you're going to the Olympics. And I'm like, I've been doing this since I was 14 years old. Wow. I've been training since I was 14 years old. This is not something that just happened when you found out. Yes. You know. And it's not something you've just done. It's something you've consistently done. I've consistently done. So it's not like you did it for one year, you put it down. You've no. consistently done I've this. I've consistently done this. And you have the calf muscles to show for it. <laughs> you, have, you have the calves. You have the calf muscles to show yes. for your for your for your, your years. <laughs> My years of over hard a decade work. over a decade of, of hard work. Yeah, yeah. So so what does excellence mean to you? Because wow. I, I, the more the older I get, the more I re, I realize the importance of defining words for yourself, mm -hmm. especially words like excellence. Right? Mm -hmm. we, we we know that that's something to aspire to. Mm -hmm. We know that it's a value and a virtue, if if you could call it that, that is aspired to and that is celebrated in the world. Mm -hmm. But I find that it means different things to different people, and I think that's important. Yeah. So what does excellence mean to you? Excellence to me is the freedom to live life on your own terms. Like the ability to live life on your own terms. And I, it's crazy that, yes. it sounds quite simple, mm -hmm. but if you think about a lot of young people our age, they have so many dreams, so many things they want to do, and you ask, why aren't you doing it? And it's like, well, because I have this, or I need to do that, yes. or I need to do that. The excellence is you getting up and just doing it. Yes. And that freedom is what excellence is. That's what excellence is. That's what excellence Excellence is. is not the results. It's not the results. It's the freedom to do freedom. that. Yeah. Because the thing about it, if you look at, you know, you can look at the most wealthiest people in the world or the most successful people in the world, you know, and a lot of them are unhappy yeah. or trapped in whatever it is that they're doing. Are they excellent in my book? No. <laughs> you know, it's, it's that ability to, you know who I think is excellent? Tell Sha me. Shaquille O'Neal. Hello. Shaq is like one of the people that he's done. He does anything he wants to do. You can see Shaq anywhere. Anywhere, in any ad. Doing anything. All sorts of things, yeah. All sorts of things. And that for you is what excellence That's is. That's what excellence is. I love that. I love, I love that a lot. And you said, you know, when you were defining what it means to you, you said it's, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. And that's something else I'm learning more of, that some of the most impactful things mm -hmm. require the least amount of complexity. Yes. It's how do we keep it simple, mm -hmm. keep it, you know, sort of keep, keep it simple, keep it clean, keep it tidy and just stay on it. Yes. Stay on it. So the freedom to be. So when would you say that you would you say you've always been a person who has stood in that freedom? Would you say you've always been there or you took it took you a while to get there? Do you remember a moment where you were like that marked a turning point for you? Tell me your journey to becoming yeah. or in your, your pursuit of excellence. How yeah. what that journey has been I like? I think I mean. I think when you're going through puberty and when you're coming into yourself, it's never easy. Yeah. You know, because the whole world is telling you how you're supposed to be, what space you're supposed to occupy, what you're supposed to be like, and, and as you're trying to define yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And so that piece is never easy. I will say, though, that I've always been a disruptor. So I've always disrupted the way things are. Yeah. Because to me, it doesn't make, if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't it make sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> so why does it have to stay that way? So why does it have to stay that way? And so I've always had that curiosity and that questioning yeah. of the way things are. Even since I was a kid, you know, questioning why, why are we doing it like this uh -huh. or when we could do it like that, like that, right? And I think for me, the turning point or the switch was, I think when I graduated Columbia, okay. right? Because I was under pressure, like many Columbia graduates, to go do investment banking, to do the safe thing. And I remember talking to my dad about, actually I was sitting on the front, on the front, on the stoop, the stoop of our apartment building, and I was so stressed. I was so stressed because I just graduated Columbia, I didn't have a job, 
I turned down an internship with NBC Universal, something like that. And my dad, I was on the phone with my dad, and I was just like, I don't know what to do. Like, I just, it just doesn't feel right with my spirit. My dad said, no, no one ever made a billion dollars pursuing someone else's dream. You build, if you go building someone else's dream, you'll never be successful. And he was talking about it monetary wise, yes. right? But, but I took that beyond that, right? And that summer, I went to the African Games, and he was like, just go to the African Games, compete. Do whatever you need to do to compete. And that, you know, that jump, that initial jump, where I was just like, you know what, whatever, I'm just gonna do what I need to do, everything will work itself out. Work itself out. That was when I got that freedom. That's when I jumped into my excellence, so to speak, where it was like, I, I took that first jump and after that, I was just like... So you tasted it and you were like, I like this. I like this. Whatever this is, <laughs> more, more of this. I like this. Okay, so, so being, so you said that you're a disruptor and I really do believe that you are that. Um, but being a disruptor takes courage. Yes. It takes a lot of bravery and it takes courage mm -hmm. to stand against the side of school, to just not flow with the current. Mm -hmm. Where did you develop that courage from? How do you, you know, how do you practice? I think it's like a muscle. Yeah. How do you keep flexing it? How do you, how do you keep it in use? What are your, how, like, in real tactical ways, how do you ensure that you are staying courageous? Right, and I think this comes back to the definition of courage and what people think courage is. I yes. think when people think about someone who's courageous, they think it's someone that's fearless. Ah. That's not what it is. Mm -mm. It's about, I'm just as scared as you are. Mm -hmm. I'm just as anxious. I'm just unsure as you are, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm feeling all the same things you're feeling, but I'm not letting but it I'm stop like, me. I'm doing it. And that's what the courage is. So when people, I've, I've been asked that question quite a bit. Um, and it always comes back to like, I'm just as nervous and just unsure. Like, I'm as unsure about it as you are. I'm just going to do it anyway. And for me, what it comes from is that I, I, I don't, my biggest regret in life would be on my deathbed, looking back and Ooh. realizing I didn't do the things I wanted to do. Yeah, Nadia, that's why we're here. This is why I've dragged you yeah. to come and do you this know, thing. Yeah. We have one life to live and everyone operates on this whole like, yeah, you know, you know, you die and then what, your spirit goes, we don't know what happens. Maybe you die and that's just it and yeah. you wasted 70 years of your life just sitting around, you know? And so for me, I want to make sure everything in my heart comes out. Everything. And so you're like, I feel it. Let it you out. execute. Reset execute. execution. It's the same way with relationships. Like if I, I don't go to, I don't hold grudges. Like I don't, mm -hmm. I don't stay on top of things like, like, oh, he said this or that, per or this person thinks that about me. No, I could die tomorrow. <laughs> I could. And you just move on. Just move on. So being aware of your mortality, Yes. Has helped you just he, like what? Why? What is the what worst? What is the that worst thing happen? that could happen? What is the worst that could happen besides me dying? <laughs> I think. I, I think asking. I wonder how much more the qual in terms of quality of life. Mm -hmm. How much? How much? The degree to which the quality mm -hmm. of all our lives mm -hmm. would be exponentially increased if we asked ourselves that question more often, and then just did things that, just, that, that just did things that we wanted What's to the do. Worst that could happen? Okay, so Nadia, so I'm, you know, so what I'm hearing though is that. You've kind of created a mantra mm -hmm. and a, kind of like a framework for mm -hmm. how you move through the world. But the executing mm -hmm. is where, is that's the, or like Nigerians would say, that's where the cocoa is. That's the mm -hmm. main mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. the execution. Mm -hmm. And I think it takes a ruth, like ruthless execution mm -hmm. to be, I mean, to be an Olympic athlete, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can be like, I, I can, I, I'm going to get to the Olympics, but no, you actually have to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. You actually have to do these things. What are some of your daily, like, what are your habits? What are some of your, or what are some habits that you have now that you feel have been most transformational or transformative mm -hmm. for you? So I, I wouldn't say as much as, you know, to my training aspect. I think training is obvious what you need to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to work hard, need, like, yeah. physically you need to be up. You're not going to the Olympics. Yeah, you need to do, you need if you to don't do, do your things. squats and box, <laughs> if you see Nadia do a box jump, you also, don't, you don't want to be caught in a fist fight with this lady. You, you are finished. <laughs> you know, the, that's the obvious one, yeah. right? But I think beyond that, I think I'm very much, you mentioned this earlier, like I'm big on energy. Mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, the reason why we stay alive is because we attract certain types of energy, yeah. right? And I'm a collector of energy and share my energy. 
And I believe that everything that has gotten me up until this point is that openness to share and that openness to connect and collect other people's stories. I don't read, I'm, I'll tell you this right now, I, I don't think I've ever finished a book. <laughs> I don't, like, I don't think I've ever finished a book. Yeah. I'm not a reader. Yeah. That's not how I learn. That's Same. not how I connect. I learn from the stories of people. I conversation. learn from the conversations, the stories of people. And so I spend a lot of time connecting with people. I go to the track. I see people running around and I go up and talk to them in between my reps. Like, what, how is your day going? Why are you here? And I've met some incredible people. That way. That have invested in me. Yeah. Beyond that, right? And so I think for me, it's, 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 my routine is really taking a moment to connect with people. Connect with people at all times. Because... Honestly, I think we should all have that empathy for each other because we're all we all just showed up here randomly and we're expected yeah. to figure it out. Yes. None of us knows why we're here. None of us knows why we're here. <laughs> so it's just having that empathy and connect like, you know, come in we came into this coffee shop talking to the person at the front. Yeah, hearing yeah. about what their day has been like. Asking them what they were having for because we were yes. like, What sandwich are you having? You know, yeah. it's it's those moments and I think though that's what's invaluable to my experience that's what's been invaluable to where i've been able to get because i'm constantly collecting and sharing collecting and sharing energy collecting and sharing energy and i think there is to be able to collect and share energy you have to believe that there is is an abundance mm -hmm. there is enough for all of us mm -hmm. and nadia like i said in the intro i really do believe that you stand in abundance in just the way you move through the world how, how do you come to that place? Like, what, like, how has that been for you? You're very generous with your energy yeah. and with your presence. And just really when you talk, there's a sense in which you're, you know, even, and it's interesting because you are a competitive athlete. Mm -hmm. So one would think it'd be the reverse, right? But you just, you, you seem very, we can all get it. <laughs> we can all grind. I'm going to the Olympics and there's only going to be one gold medal, but we can all win. You know, you know, so that, that really is how you feel. Like, right, so, it is. so talk to me about how it you is. have cultivated an abundance mindset and how that has helped you kind of switch, course correct, change yeah. direction and all of that. Because you know what? Your lane is not my lane. Hello. Right? What you're, the space you want to occupy mm -hmm. is not the space I need to occupy. Yeah. So what does it do to me to take that away from you? Yeah. Right? All I can do is just add to that space and someone else will add to my space, right? Yeah. And, I, and I think, you know, as far as generosity goes, I really, I, I keep that like an open heart to people because mm -hmm. I believe in the same for me. You know, there, there are people that I've met that I've come away that like, you know how they say like you can meet one person that changes the course your of life. your life? You've had those experiences. I've had those people. Oh, wow. And I want to be that person for, for someone okay. else, right? And so it's just, I, I, once again, going back to we're all here yeah. with no idea why we're here. What good is it if I carry everything to myself and die? Yeah. Like, what is that? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and part of the, part of the, like, the, the selfish way about it is if I invest into you and you go somewhere and build something, that's a piece of my energy going somewhere else. Yeah. Right, and I think that's a beautiful thing, and that's what's beautiful about life and existing. But on the on the on the side of like, you know, how did I get to this place of like thinking about things in this way? I think it's really spending a lot of time reflecting. Mm. I do that a lot, so I reflect. Like, if I have an interaction with somebody, or I'm going through the day and all of a sudden I feel sad, I have to stop like and ask myself. Person what is this is it a thought is it a feeling what is it is it good or bad why you know i always reflect what's right? the difference a thought or a feeling so a thought is just something that's in your mind so like i think we talked about this uh -huh. right and this is something i practice heavily right and so a thought is like okay i'm sitting here and i'm thinking oh i forgot to put um the the time to, to pay for, the meter, pay for the meter that's a thought yeah now a feeling is i'm anxious that i'll get a ticket okay but sometimes we get the two confused. Ah. So a thought might bother you, like, oh, I forgot to put the timer on the mm -hmm. meter. But you didn't stop to acknowledge that it was just a thought, right? And then maybe you're already thinking about it, and then somebody shouts at you and says something. Then you're even more upset because now it's like, this thought is a bad thought, and then somebody has done something. So there's more negativity that's coming. Now you don't know why you're upset, but something is making you upset, and you feel energy. some way. It's a big ball of bad energy. And so mm -hmm. the reason why I stop is because you can stop a thought in its tracks before it turns into a feeling. Ooh, ooh, you know? that's a good and one. So, so if you acknowledge yourself, oh, I'm only okay. anxious because, no, I'm only anxious. I didn't pay for the meter. 
okay, let me go pay for the meter. And Squash that's that. it. Yeah. Right? But then it's like, oh, I didn't pay for the meter. And then now it becomes, what if a meter guy comes? That's still a thought. And then all of a sudden it, it, it turns into like some sort of emotion. And that's how, and that's just a very simple way to yeah, put yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's how like a lot of the things that we do in life come about, right? Like the way we, we navigate the world, it's like things are happening and we're just kind of operating, operating without stopping to acknowledge, wait, I was happy just two seconds ago and something just disrupted what that. Shifted? What was it? Ooh, okay. I'm thinking about something that's not positive. And what is that? Why am I thinking about that? What is that? And then sometimes when you dissect it, you're like, oh, I'm only worried about the meter. <laughs> ah, okay. You know? I see. So it's, it's really dissecting what you feel before it adds on. And that's the stuff. benefit of reflecting for you. And that's what, that's what reflecting has done for me. So, like, I've gone to this point where, like, sometimes I'll go somewhere, like, I'm in line and somebody's just like upset and they come in and they just start shouting. And I'm just like, you can go. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. Like okay, sorry, <laughs> you know. You go ahead. You go ahead. Because I just feel like I, I'm so I'm so at peace with myself mm -hmm. that like you can't people can't disrupt. I'm the only person that can disrupt my peace. Hello. I'm the only person that can disrupt my. You peace. You know what that also is? That's confidence in who you are. You're a confident person, and it's a perfect segue <laughs> to the question that just popped to the question that just popped in my head. Uh -huh. How have you been able to build your confidence up? Because. It's one thing to say, you know, it's one thing to have these beautiful ideas. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to be like, okay, I'm just going to do it because what if I die tomorrow? Mm -hmm. But it's a whole other ball game to believe mm -hmm. that you have the ability to do that which you have set out to do and to do it well. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to come to that place where you believe? Because Nadia, we've talked about things and you're just mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> she has no clue yet. She doesn't have the details. She doesn't have the like specifics. But she's certain, you are certain oh, yeah. that it's going to be great. Yeah. And that confidence, that's how you win, I think. You it, know? Is. Um, it is. Of course, you know, balance that out with actually doing and having your information. But how have you been able to cultivate that, that confidence? I would say one part of it is, is having a childhood that was grounded in being an athlete. Ah. Right? Oh. I think that that is fundamental to that. Because how so? At a very early age, I knew what it was like to win. I knew what it was like to fail by the time I was five years old. Yeah. I knew what failure felt like and I knew I didn't like it. But I also knew what winning felt like, right? And so I think for me, that confidence is like, I know if I try, I can win. Yeah. That's like my upbringing. I know if I put all my energy into it, if I focus, I can win. Yeah. Right? And that's the foundation of that was from my childhood in sports. I would give it like 70%. It's just being in a situation where I know I'm in control of my fate. Like, I know yeah. if I put my heart to it, I'm going to. Because you see the results. I'm the captain of my faith, yes, the master of my soul. Exactly. So you yeah. see the results of things that you've put your mind to happen, and then it translates into other things. And then with other things, it's like you almost build a resume for yourself, like a mental resume of like, well, when I put my mind to that, that happened. When I put my mind to that, that happened. So why wouldn't this happen? Ah. Right. So do you, do you have one of those? So I just, I was reading an article. It's interesting you say that. I was reading an article sometime last month where they said that a way, and the article, the, the author in the article says, that one way to essentially cultivate excellence is to have a highlight reel mm -hmm. that you play for yourself in moments when you're feeling low. And essentially, your highlight reel is like your, I'm the, I, I'm the ish, mm -hmm. you know, how you play that for yourself. Do you have one of those? Like, do you have moments that you go back to and you're like, no. Nadia, if you did this, there is nothing you cannot do? No, ah, I don't. Okay. I don't, but what I do have is I know, like, I have this version of myself. Uh -huh right that i see in the future yeah and i talk about this person like to my fiance we talk about her all the time oh my god and it's like i've seen this woman over and over, over and again. over and over and over again right and in sports they do there's this thing of visualization and i think in you know life in general mm -hmm. where if you see it over and over and over again your mind thinks that if you think about it over and over again and visualize it, your mind thinks it's already happened yeah and so there's nothing stopping you from getting, from getting there, there, right? And is this woman in a white suit? <laughs> it's always a white suit. I love white always suit. a white suit. She's in a white suit. It's me, and I've seen her over. I've seen her since I was like 16 years old. Oh wow, yeah. Right, and it's just like I keep seeing her. I keep seeing her. I keep seeing. I consciously seeing her. It's not like something I just a vision, but like I keep seeing her because I know that's where I'm going. Yes. So a lot of the times. As opposed to looking backwards, I look forward and it's like, whatever I do now, it's not going to change the fact that I'm going to be that woman. 
So whatever is happening now is just getting me ready, ready to be for that her. Way. Whether it's failure or winning. It's all it's all it's part, all of, the part of that. Yes. Because that's who I'm gonna be. Whew. This reminds me of something I learned from a professor in college. Mm -hmm. um, my communications professor, one of them. And it's a concept called entelechy. Mm -hmm. Which and the, the concept essentially posits that your the highest version of yourself already exists in the world and is calling out to you. Mm -hmm. Like your highest accomplishments, yes. your highest your essentially your woman in the white suit, your Nadia yeah. in the white suit already exists in the world yeah. and is calling out to you. Yeah. So this is actually like there's there is theory <laughs> for this for this which you yes, are. Yes, and I believe that. Visualization. Visualization. Nadia, you know, so in talking to you, it's clear that, you know, you you're a very tactical person. Mm -hmm. You're very tactical, you're very like you're an entrepreneur, so of course numbers, facts, figures matter to you. You're an athlete, so numbers, you know, time, all those really concrete quantitative things matter to you. But you also exist very happily and wholly in the qualitative, mm -hmm. in the in the sort of in the intangible. Mm -hmm. What, if any, um, impact has that had in the way you come to life? Mm -hmm. Like just how in terms of your sense of wonder, because I mean, this visualization, it's a thing. And of course, like I just said, there's a theory, mm -hmm. but it's still very, to some people, it's still very woo-woo. Mm -hmm. But you embrace it, you know, and, and ener even like the concept of energy. Yeah. People, it's a real thing because, you know, energy, it's, it's Newton's law. Like mm -hmm. Newton, right? Energy can neither be created, created nor destroyed. destroyed. You know, it's... Quick edit. It's actually not Newton's law. It's the first law of thermodynamics. Carry on. These are real things, but it's still very... Like, uh, it's still up there. <laughs> How you know? So, so what's been the impact of being able to be open to to the un, to, to the unknown, to the intangible? Right. That you know what it is for me, and I, we mentioned this earlier. Like the whole fact to me is like none of us actually know. We don't know. We don't know for a fact. Yeah. We can only hold on to other people's stories or other people's versions of the truth. Yeah. Right. What makes someone who's told this story 30,000, 30, I said 30,000, 45 years, 300 years ago, stronger than my story. Mm -hmm. What makes that stronger? The only difference is people have passed it on. Mm -hmm. So somebody holding the theory that the world is flat, it was just passed on and it became someone's truth. Mm -hmm. Someone said it was round, it was just passed on. And, and it became someone's truth. truth. So I don't hold on to other people's truths as the ultimate truth. It may be a version of the truth, but I think that like, as far as like my existence, like. I just think about it like my experience is equally as valuable as anyone else who has walked on this earth, right? And so if I am seeing or questioning or feeling things, it's equally as, it's just as real. It's just as real. As someone experiencing Jesus. It's just as real. Like, and I, like, I don't even want to go down the religion yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. but like, you know, like when you think about even the, the reason why people's revelations in the Bible hold value is because that was the only thing that was captured. And was written down yes i think we're all getting revelations every single day Ooh, but no one is really capturing it in that sense and right? no one is running with it no one's running with it back then only a certain group of people can actually write stuff down and transfer so you know it's, it's incredible what you're saying is incredible the the power in saying this is a thing and standing in it and how people will just believe you like think about it tomorrow yes. tomorrow you could literally wake up and say i'm an interior designer and you show pictures of your apartment and all of a sudden you are yeah. i mean of course there are more interior yes, designers with yes. more qualifications and more things but people begin to actually yeah. think of you in that way yes yes and that's really what it is and i and i'll use this example like when i graduated columbia i was i mean my goal was that you know i wanted to be an expert on how athletes could become multifaceted yeah. and build their brand beyond the sport. I wanted to be an expert in that so I could help other athletes mm -hmm. do that. I lived through it and now I'm seen as a thought leader as that. Yeah. How did you get there? I Tactics. And that's the thing, but it's like it's not something I consciously did. Were you like writing articles? Were you doing interviews? No. What were you doing? I wasn't I was just living it. Huh. I was just living it, right? And so like, and that's another thing about our generation, it's like everyone's obsessed with things appearing like they're whatever it is, as opposed to living it. Okay. And that's part of social media, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, if I am an expert, I need to post like an expert. No, I just need to live like the expert. So what does that mean? Like, I create opportunities for myself beyond the sports. I create ways to make six figures doing whatever I want to do. I create yeah. ways to do those things using my brand as an athlete to do that. And now, 
people value that experience. I don't need to write an article on Forbes because they see your they see your resume, they see your credentials, and they they're like, "She's living it." I'm living it, right? And uh, so it's so and so I use that to say what you were saying back to is like people believe what you tell them or what you live. Yeah, people believe it. And going back to what you said <laughs> in the beginning, nobody knows. Nobody knows. This we are all running on vibes. <laughs> We are running on vibes. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And you're right. And, yeah. and I think it just, it just it's, I mean, this is amazing because it's now just all tying together. Yeah. Nobody knows. Go for it. Go for Nobody it. knows. Pipe up and say, I am this person. Nobody and knows. And live like that person. And live like that person. And, yes. and okay, so tell me, has there been a time when you've had to like sort of switch identities? Like when you were being thought of more as one thing and you're like, okay, I'm that thing, cool, but I am also this. Yeah. And how did you navigate making that switch? and ensuring that other people recognize that there's been a switch. Yes, I think definitely 100%, right? I think early on in my career, I had to switch back okay. and forth because people weren't comfortable seeing me as this multifaceted person in those different spaces. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they don't take you seriously, mm -hmm. right? And I think, I don't call it switching. I call it playing the game in a way that's easier for them to understand. So make Hello. it easier for yourself, right? Yeah. So if you want to see me as this corporate person I'll present that for you but once I'm at the table the conversation is different right I'm there to change the narrative so I don't have to show up as this multifaceted person to confuse you and make it difficult for you I'll show up as whatever it is to make it easier for you to have the conversation with me so I can change the narrative and I think it's not like I said it's not so much switching it's so, more so like being aware of what your ultimate goal is so I we've talked uh, about this yes, before uh -huh. and I've been very very strategic and very very calculated about my interactions with certain people right so for a brief stint I was the dean of the law school's administrative assistant yeah I think we talked about that and I mean for somebody who graduated Columbia it's like come on what are you doing yeah but I was there to tell her my story so she could know me in a way that no, like nobody else at the institution could know me and she had power yeah and so now that she's bought into my story i presented myself in the way that was easy for her to uh -huh. understand but then i got into her office yeah. and we would hang out we'd go to lunch and now i text her you know what i mean and yeah. so it's it's i think that's that's the piece of it it's like huh. you have to make this game easy for yourself by one humbling yourself and two, presenting yourself in a way that it makes the, it easier. Yourself. Humbling yourself. Like, you, and that humility comes from knowing who that lady in the white suit is. Yes. Whether I'm sitting here taking calls for the dean. I'm still that woman. I'm still that woman. I'm still the woman in the white suit. I'm still that woman. And so for me, like, I use that as an example because I was very intentional about that space. Yeah. But I also presented myself in a way that was easy for everyone to oh she's just a college graduate and then once you get in there you stand in the fullness of yourself you stand in the fullness and, and i mean you're always in the fullness of yourself but again it's a part of you it's not it's not it's yeah. not it's not not a part of you yes yeah. so so i mean this is a nice this is a nice segue into talking about what authenticity means to you mm -hmm. like authenticity and your journey authenticity and how do you ensure that while you are presenting in a way that it makes it easier for your larger mm -hmm. goal mm -hmm. For the you know for the people for people to connect with your larger goal, how do you ensure that you don't? Nadia has never lost in the fray. Yeah, it's like what well, don't get lost in the sauce. Don't like, get lost in the sauce. I think you yeah. have to. You always have to check back in with yourself and ask yourself, why am I doing this? What am I here for? Why? why here? Right? Why? What? What is your why? They always say that. What is your why? And if you cannot answer that then you're in the wrong space or something has happened. Yes. Right? And so it's almost like your personal mission statement, whatever it is that you're trying, whatever space it is that you're trying to occupy in the world, every space that you're in, you have to check back in and why ask yourself, here? why am I here? How does this lead to that? And so I take it back again to that Dean situation where, you know, I'm there, I'm an admin assistant making nothing. And it's like, why am I here? I'm not here to take phone calls. I'm not here to put a calendar. I'm not here to make bees yeah i'm here because she needs to know me and if she knows me all her friends will know me and when all her friends know me i can push my agenda yeah and so my mind has always been every space i'm in has to answer that why has to answer that why and i love that your path to that was service yeah yes your path yes. to that was service yes 
Let's talk yes. about that. Yes. Because <laughs> I've been reading more about that and I've been learning about that and how the biggest way to win in life yes. is to always yes. be of service. Yes. Talk to me. Yes, yes. I am glad you really brought this up, right? Because I think that, once again, our generation is so caught up in like this Instagram life. In the optics. In the optics of everything. That it's like, I don't want to sound some way, but you're nobody yet. And yes. you need to be aware of that. Like, you're I don't on your know, way. You're on your way. I don't know all the things I need to know. I don't, yeah. I don't have all the tools I need to have in my bag. And so have that humility about you. And for me, my way to con networking, and I don't believe in going to networking events. I've never been to a networking event. Mm -hmm. And you know the type of people that I roll with. Ah. <laughs> you know, Boy, do I. We I've talk about that, by the way, because... <laughs> hello. I've, uh -huh. never been to an, I've never been to a networking event. But the thing is, when I was at that phase where... I was the recent graduate who didn't know what she wanted to do. I always made myself available to the people that were in places that could make decisions. Yes. So that what does that look like? Offering coaching to the dean of the business school's children, offering coaching or babysitting to one of Columbia's board of advisors. Like those are the moments that you're networking, right? Yes. So yes, I'm graduated Columbia and I'm babysitting. But the people I'm babysitting for are people that can change my life yeah but they need to see me as this person who's willing to do the menial stuff who's before they can trust me yeah. yeah before they can trust me with big things and every space that i've been in it's been about that like really bringing myself down to like okay i don't know all the things i need to know but how can i make myself useful here and when you do that people see that about you and they talk to other people about you so focusing on the value on the value what, what value, value can am i bring, bring? here and you realize like as you go and, and back to the D story and I say this because like it led to me having a position created for me there and now yeah. it led to me being being able to consult in the way that I do yeah. like it led to something so much bigger because you served because I served she knows like this girl will do anything for me and I love the way you're framing this because oftentimes you know you don't you don't want to be taken advantage of yeah especially when you're green when you're new you don't want people to take you for a ride yeah. But I think understanding, reframing the conversation in your mind. Yeah. I'm, I'm already who I'm going to be. Yeah. I'm just on my way. I'm just on my and way. And I'm serving to get there. To get there. Why am I I'm here? I'm honoring the process. I need to be, why am I here? And how is why this going to lead to that? And how am I going to make sure it leads to that? That's yeah. another piece. It's not something that just happens by chance. You uh -huh. have to actively make it happen, right? By you being in those actively. settings. Do you, ever, do you ever get, do you ever sort of like, wonder to yourself am i dreaming big enough do you have no. moments when you're like you say no 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 because you're always dreaming big enough yeah good good no i i, I never really think about because the thing about it is like, <laughs> <laughs> the reason why i say that is because like i'm the type of person like i'm almost delusional with the things that i dream about but don't you have to be though to like you do stuff that matters you have to be right you have to be i'm almost delusional because i look at all these people that have done incredible things and i'm like they were born just like I was. They're gonna die just like I died. So, yeah. if them, why not me? Yes. You know, and, and, and funny enough, the opposite of sports, right? Sports is so physical that every little thing that you do physically Has dictates mm -hmm. where you're going. In life, it's not like that. One interaction, we're walking out of here, you meet somebody and your whole life changes. It could happen like that. Yeah. And li in life, supernatural things happen yes. more than sports do. Yeah. So for me, with life, I'm just like, look, I'm open. It's I'm possible. open to uh, everything is possible. Everything is possible. So as much as it's important to stay in that it's open, I'm mm -hmm. open. Which is a space I love being in, by the way. <laughs> because it's real. It's real. Um, and so Nadia and a mutual friend of ours, hi, Nekeme, um, <laughs> they have this thing that they believe in, which is, Everything is possible to the extent that you believe, believe it, it is. Yeah, so you receive it in only you in the way you, you receive to the extent only in the way you believe is possible. Say that one more time for the you people in the back. You receive it only in the way that you believe is possible. And so, and for me, when I heard that, and this was the first day I met Nadia actually, and I heard that, I was like, <laughs> "This is how I like to start things off." Um, you know, it's it's that idea that you have to keep yourself open and open. just believe and open. wild. You know, and while that is important, there's also like the you actually have to do. You have to Because do. even when those opportunities show up, you still have to do. You still have to and do. And I think a core piece of doing is discipline. Yeah, of course. Talk of to course. us about discipline. Of course. And, and I, I keep using this whole generational analogy because I really do think social media has changed 
our relationships with our goals, our relationship with discipline. Like people feel like if it's out there, it means I'm doing it. Yeah. And it's not. Discipline is like when the doors are shut, when nobody is looking, when, you know, discipline is not now that the whole world is like, oh, Nadia, you're going to the Olympics. That's not discipline. This was, discipline was two years ago, three years ago, when I had, I was negative $20,000 training with a coach that I wanted to be with. That's discipline. Right? It's not like now that people are like, oh, you're nice apartment. <laughs> no, that's the, I'm reaping the benefits of that discipline. So I think there just has to be a part of you where you'd be willing to lose everything Ooh. for that dream to happen. Yeah. That's what discipline is. It's like I'm willing to give it all up. Like I'm willing to lose everything. For this dream. To hit rock bottom for this to happen. If somebody told me that I needed to live. That is so crazy. I don't know that I think. Do you have to get there? Do you have to You be, don't have to get there, but you have to be willing. You have to be willing. You have to be willing. That's how much in it you have to be. And and, and it's not even like you're willing. It's like you know it's going to work. Okay. So you're willing to go through anything for it to work. Ah. Do you get what I'm saying? It's, yes. like, it's not like I'll lose everything and I'm stuck at rock bottom. No, I'll lose everything in order for this thing to work. Uh I'm I'm willing to be uncomfortable because I know it's going to work. And maybe I have to be uncomfortable for a couple of years, but I'm willing to go through that. A lot of people don't have that. Do you ever struggle with discipline? Do you ever struggle where you're like, I'm not really on it? Um, (laughs) the way I am though, I think, I don't don't know if it's a discipline thing. It's just like, personally, if my heart is not in it, I'm not going to do it. I'm impulsive. Like I literally was in grad school on Saturday. <laughs> I was like, story. this is a waste of my money. <laughs> I, I talked to my fiance. I was like, oh, I don't think I like, no, I was like Friday. I was like, it's not, I'm not feeling the assignment. It's not, it's Saturday I withdrew. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. Yeah. And I don't regret it. You know, but it's like, it, it's for me, because I'm so, I live with passion. Yeah. It's not even about discipline. It's just like everything I'm doing, my heart is in it. Until it's not. Ooh, ooh. You know what's so crazy about this? This is why, you know, people think these things are woo-woo, but I believe so much in alignment and yes. in things happening. Oh, yeah. Because the number, yesterday, just yesterday, I saw a clip from this interview that, I think his name is Ross, he's a rapper. He did it, he was on a podcast. What's his name? I think it was Jay Shetty's podcast. Mm. And basically, he was talking about how work ethic, you know, mm. when he wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing, mm. when he wasn't doing what he was passionate about or where he could thrive or what he was, what his space mm. was, what he cared about, it seemed like he had no work ethic. Mm-hmm. But when you're waking up doing that which feels true to you, you're, you're grinding, you're doing it. Mm. So, I mean, I think that's a very real thing and that's basically mm-hmm. what you're saying. Like, mm-hmm. it's when you're, it's, you know, you can be disciplined when you believe in what you're doing. But I also feel though, do you ever, do, but do you also think that it's, I also think it's important to be able to be disciplined even with that which oh, you yeah, don't care yeah, about. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's not even like the things that you don't care about. It's always keeping oh, oh, in mind. Oh, not, not, not care it's about. It's like keeping life. in mind of the, where you're trying to go, right? Okay. And I keep using this Dean example thing because I think it's very relevant. Mm-hmm. Because like, for example, I was disciplined in showing up taking calls, doing all those things, but I, it was not where my passion was. I knew what I was passionate about. I knew how this would get me to that point. Yeah. I think a piece of all of this is you always have to have a plan, right? Like not a plan like I'll go from here, I'll go from here, I'll go from here. Like a plan of like a high level plan. Like I want to be X, Y, Z, right? Yeah. So this is how I want to navigate. Navigate the world with intention. Right? Do nothing without intention. And navigate the world with intention. Be passionate about the things you're passionate about, but also recognize the things that you do, you have to do that you don't necessarily enjoy that yes. are tied to that passion. And yes. that's that intention. So it's like, yes, I'm disciplined, um, but I knew it was tied to my passion. Now, yes. if somebody just said, oh, come and work in the dean's office and I didn't see how this would lead to anything, I'm not going to do gonna it. You're not going to do it. You know? So it's, I think it's a balance of like intention. Yeah. Along with your passion uh-huh. and knowing that this might lead to this might lead to that although it's not exactly like direct directly correlated this is how i wanted to to lead to that i love that and what i'm hearing you say is like remind yourself Mm -hmm. just remind yourself yes there's a reason there's a reason there's a purpose and so be be be, committed to that yes be committed to yourself so don't do it for the for the process Mm -hmm. don't do it it's not for them it's for you yes Discipline in any kind of way will it's serve commitment. you. Yeah, exactly. I like that. Yeah. This discipline is really a commitment to yourself. Whew. That's it. Discipline is a commitment to yourself. To yourself. 
It's not for anybody, it's for you. We should take clips of this and just put it on t shirts <laughs> because, hello, discipline is a commitment, commitment to, to yourself. yourself. Yeah, yeah. I agree that with that. And so, Anything you do. And so, of course, while it might be easier to show up for the things that are passion, are passion projects mm -hmm. for you, being able to be disciplined even about that which doesn't necessarily feel like that, but recognizing that it's all part of your, of your journey. Yes. Ah. Yeah. Nads. <laughs> so I have so many nicknames for Nadia. I have superstar Nads. I have big business Nads. Um, I'm gonna have Olympic Nads. Look. Um, this was this was, this is this is this was so no, great. No, this is great. This like, is but, great. you know, but before we go, you do a lot. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of things, mm -hmm. really and truly. And like, I'm not even gonna tell you guys the conversation I had with Nadia a couple weeks ago when I was trying to set this up, and she was like, "Sorry, I'm getting ready to go to this event with X Y Z." We're not even going to talk about that. But so just know that Nadia, <laughs> Nadia stays on task. She stays on job. This woman is working. Um, how do you recharge? How do how you do recharge? How do you oh, stay one. grounded? How do you take care that's of? That's a good one. Of nads. You know what? I that's the one thing I struggle with. Ah. Boundaries. Ooh. For myself. Because it's like, you know, I, I've always done so much. I've been successful at doing so much, right? And I enjoy what I'm doing that I don't know when to draw the line. Yeah. Between what I actually have to do uh -huh. and like, you know, what I need to do. Like what I have to do and what I need to do for myself. Yeah. Right? And, and so that's something that actually this year was my biggest focus is like, how can I take a step back? Like I don't need to, I, I think part of it came from when I was younger and setting myself up for this uncharted path that I was going on mm -hmm. I needed to make every meeting happen I needed to make every I made myself available to so many things and For now everything. I'm at that point where I have the leverage I've created my own space and like opportunities come whether or not I go after them yeah. right and being able to having comfort in that and recognizing the hard work I've put into it right and I think that's something that I'm becoming more conscious of so how do I recharge I think one of the things I, I'm, I'm doing more is like Spending time with like, like taking time, just taking, taking time. time. Like it Slowing sounds, it's so, yeah, it sounds very like okay, no, but like <laughs> really, because there's sometimes like now the way my calendar works is like if I don't book the same day meeting, no, I'm not gonna book a meeting on the same day. If you give me, if I have a task that I need to do that just pops up, it's moving, it's getting moved. Like it's not happening on the same day. And then when I get down to my to do list, I'm like. Do I need to do this today? No, I move it. You know, and so it's really, really giving myself the space and the time to get things done. And, and to just, breathe. And to breathe. And so to like, take care of your new baby, Fifi. <laughs> baby Fifi. She has a new dog. Because I was Fifi. so, I get mm -hmm. so like, just by my personality, I get so like, I need to go here, I need to do that, I need to do that. Yeah. And then sometimes I just need to like, stop. Breathe. Just stop, yeah. So I'm being more conscious of that and like, it's not easy, but yeah. you know, it's one of the things that, it's my area of growth. The self awareness. I love the self awareness. Yeah, it's my area of growth, and I'm working. And my fiance, like, he's really on me. Like, you know. Ooh, like, ooh, ooh. Let's talk about. Let's talk about that. I know I said that was my other that other thing was my last question. What role do you? Because you're a big, like you said, energies. Mm -hmm. What role, or how important are the relationships in your life, oh, and yeah. what role have they played in helping you be this multifaceted? you know, phenomenal multi hyphenate that you are right now. Yeah. I you know, I, I like I said, energy energy can make or break you. Yeah. As a human being. Like energy could kill you. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I'm big on you know, the type of energy I surround myself with. Yes. Right? People anyone around me has to add to my energy. Yes. And I become very like very, very receptive about it. Like if there's a like there are people that I've met that are people that, you know, are successful that, you know, someone like, oh, I need to network with that. If I meet you, you can be the billionaire or whatever and about to write me. If I meet you and I don't feel uh -huh. good after our interaction, that's it. You're out. I don't compromise on the energy. On the energy. I do not compromise on energy. And I think for me, I'm such a give, poor, 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 poor that I need people around me that are, you know, also there to recharge. Yeah. You know, I mean, recognize how much I do, but like, I like recharging my energy too. You know, because another thing is like when you're that type of person where you give, 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 and you have people around you with bad energy, they take, 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 yes. take, take, you yes. know, and so you're depleted. And so I really make sure I surround myself with people that recognize mm -hmm. that and, and pour into my energy as well. And so you, do you make time for like your, to ensure that your friendships are 
oh, the yeah. health of your friendships are good. Yeah, You're turning up with your friends when you need to. Absolutely. And the thing is, my friends are so wrapped up into my life and I'm wrapped up into their life. Like, That's good. You know, it's not like, if you're my friend, it's not like we just go to brunch and that's it. Like, I'm invested in you. Like, vice, I expect and, you and to way, be invested yeah. in me. So I'll come here and do the thing with you. Whatever you need me to do, like, I'm, yeah. that's what it's about, right? And so I think it's just, yeah, it's really about having that. And it feels so much more fulfilling, too. It just is. <laughs> so much it just is. You can turn is. up and then you can do big business together. Like <laughs> I keep saying that. Like the old, I'm like, you know, I, I know there's different friends for different things, but what a dream. Yeah. To like turn up with your friends, share real things, be vulnerable, and make money and together. Make money together. Come on. Yeah. But Nads, I mean, honestly, and I am testament to how you invest in those relationships. And we haven't been friends for so long, but yeah. it feels like I've known you forever. Energy. And the way the energy. Oh, the first time you're natural, like, yep, we're gonna be friends. She literally <laughs> said, Yeah, we're good. We're going to be yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the energy. And I felt that so deeply. And you you showing up to do this has just been is I'm I'm so elated. And I'm so the proud energy of you. you had when I told you about it was just so it was like, Yes, I loved it and I appreciate you being here. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Like, and this you, is so necessary. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you dropped the biggest gems and you know like we talked about the vision for this platform is that we're talking to people who mm-hmm. are on their way like people who are grinding people who are making strides mm-hmm. and by the time this comes out i mean this is going to be a rhetorical artifact yeah. like people are going to be like in in, in in a couple of years if even nadia you are going to be a household name and i believe it so strongly <laughs> the way you move through the world and just in talking to you and learning more about you yeah. it's so clear and so to everyone who's been listening i hope that you feel as inspired i hope that you feel as motivated as i do and just encouraged to keep going to keep grinding um you can see someone who's still very much in the free like in the works as well um nadia's a big babe let's be clear she's a big babe but you know she's still very much climbing and we're all trying to figure it out nobody knows everything well literally we're all winging it So just wing it with some sense Mm -hmm. and some good fortune and you'd be fine. And so I hope that you keep going for it and just go for it, whatever it may be, as long as it's legal, (laughs) (laughs) as long as it fulfills you. Um, And just live as many lives as you want to because you are an infinite possibility and no one should tell you otherwise. Nadia is living proof. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone else, everyone, all the people. Thank you. Much love. Take care. Be Be easy. (laughs) Thank you now. This is so (laughs) good. Congrats for starting. The crew. They're like, okay, we're shooting now. But don't even get to that part yet. Fall in love with this part. With the part, yes, yes. Things is like when you fall in love so much with the process, Uh you look up and you're like, wait, how did I even get here? (laughs) And then you're like, yes. I did. I did. I, I feel like fall in love so much with it that you don't even need that stuff. Right.